I'm Jason Giga. Welcome back to another review. This time I'm here to talk about giant killer robots. GKR heavy hitters. Let's open this thing up, set it up, see what it looks like. Whoa, look at these things. These things are awesome. So this is a game about giant robots battling it out in a game show on old, broken down human cities for these giant global mega corporations. Each player controls a unique pilot which will give you a uh, small buff throughout the game. Like one guy can put out a little support mech for a little bit less energy, another guy can move his guys uh, further during the round. They're not huge game breaking abilities but they add a little bit of uniqueness to them. This game is designed by Weta Workshop, which really got me interested because these guys did the special effects for Lord of the Rings and The Hobbits, pretty much anything Peter Jackson has done. The reason it got my attention is um, probably thanks to Mechs vs. Minions, another company, a very successful company that had nothing to do with board games, that was just passionate about it, so they made a game that they all love. I'm a big fan of skirmish games to begin with, so these giant beautiful figures in a, a 3D city that just pops, that's what got me, that's what got my attention and that's what made me back this game. The game was on Kickstarter, but all the components here are retail. Um, and this is not one of those Kickstarters where oh, it's just not worth playing if you don't have everything. Other than the nice plastic trays you get with the Kickstarter that fits everything, uh, fits all your decks in so they can't move around, the rest of it is just like, almost like promo items. So don't worry if you didn't get in on the Kickstarter because I pretty much just play with the core game and don't really bother with the other stuff. The best way to explain the game is just to run through a game round for you guys. Now depending on the player count, there's a bunch of different maps to tell you where to put the buildings, and you can also just uh, create your own uh, map. There's a lot. There's a bunch more of these skyscrapers, but I think this is about how many is used in a two-player game. To start out is the deploy phase. Now, if a you've got a hand of cards here, if you have one of these D cards here, deploy, you can spend two of your energy. You always have five at the start of your turn. You would slide down two energy, so I would be at three, and I would play deploy card into my discard pile. That lets me take any of my support mechs and put them into play. You've got a combat mech, a recon, and a repair one. If you don't have a deploy card, you can still put a, a mech out for four energy. So they're nice to have. I almost always try and get one out first turn of the game, even if I have to spend the four. Starting with whoever is the first player or the glory hound, and this changes uh, throughout the game based on a few things I'll explain later. Once the deploy phase is done, then is the movement phase. So starting with everybody's heavy hitter, they can move any number of spaces they want. They'll spend the amount of energy per space they want to move. If you go beyond your five energy, no problem, but for everything you go beyond, you're taking a damage. And in this game, when you take damage, you lose cards into your damage pile from either your draw pile or your hand. You choose. But I like the freedom that you can um, just overheat your mech to go the extra mile and maybe pull off a move that another player wasn't expecting. So you can move two, say three, and then you can decide to get any facing you want. There's three colored sides on a mech and that shows where your front firing arc is. Once everyone moves their heavy hitter, then starting with their support, the combat would move, then the repair, and then the recon. These things all have um, stat cards. Um, all of the stats are the same. There's a initiative number at the top of every attack card, including the stat card for the three different uh, support units. So everyone's heavy hitter moves, and everybody's combat moves, and everybody's repair guy moves, and everybody's recon moves. Then that's the end of the movement phase. After that is the combat phase. So everyone would pick cards from your hand. 
You cannot play the same weapon. So in my hand, I have two secondary weapons represented by this S. They're both the same one, so I would only be able to pay, play one of these. Everyone would play their cards face down. And if they were going to put any of their drones into play, I would just put their card up there. Like that. Once everybody has their cards, everyone flips it up at the same time. You don't have to do that with the supports. Starting with the highest number at the top left corner, everyone gets to do that action. Now combat in this game is uber simple. You would roll two dice. Always two dice whenever you roll an attack. To hit a heavy hitter, you need a five on two dice. A three would be a miss. To hit a one of these guys, it would be a seven on two dice. That would be a hit. So you're always just trying to reach a target number on two six-sided dice. If you get hit by a weapon, like uh, look at my propellant boost down here, it would have a range of one to two. I couldn't hit him right now, but if this guy was in front of me, I could shoot my propellant boost at him. It would cost me two energy to do it, which everyone spends the moment they flip up their card. Your recon, your uh, support unit, sorry, don't spend energy for their movement and attack, but I would have to spend two on that gun. Uh, the damage is right there. If I did hit, then you always roll one dice for every point of damage you take, and you have a target save number. Heavy hitters would, if he got hit for two damage, would roll a dice. Everything that's a five or higher is a save. So I would have saved nothing, take two damage. The guy would lose a couple of cards. And the support guys would need sixes. And now this is on a single dice, so none of those were sixes. When the combat phase is done, it is now time for the tagging phase. All right, so any of your mechs that are next to a building phase would take a tag and put it in the top. You ever get four tags in the top of a building? Boom, the building is destroyed. You would remove this tower here, put a flag in it to show you destroyed it. If you ever destroy four buildings, you immediately win the game. Another way to win is, in a two-player game, just blow up the other heavy hitter. But if you're playing three or four players, soon as one heavy hitter is destroyed, then whoever has the most points is the winner. And that would be that would be the number of health that you still have left, so cards in your draw and discard pile, plus the number you've reached on the experience tracker. Additionally, for every different building that you manage to tag, you get to draw one of these sponsor cards. These really add a facet of fun to the game. There are all pretty much unique cards with uh, a couple of counter hack duplicates. But they will do things like mess with another max weapon system, letting you um, cycle through your deck, discard a bunch of cards, and draw a bunch more. There's a whole bunch of different ones, and they all represent different sponsors that are giving you some kind of a bonus. There's a bunch of hack cards where It'll, it'll tell you when you can play these cards. Usually uh, during the deployment phase, at the start of the round, you would play something. And just say you hack another max weapon system where they can only fire one weapon or they can't fire any weapon or something like that. If a player has a counter hack, then they turn that hack around on you. You can have up to five of these in your hand and I think they're really fun. And it gives another light element of strategy because playing these at the right time can really help you win a game. After the tagging phase and everyone gets their sponsor cards, you have the reset phase. Whoever put the most tags out would take the first player token or the glory token. If it's tied and you already had the glory hound token, then the other player gets it. So that's the basics of the game right there. You're moving around. Now there's cover. So if um, this guy was attacking and one shortest path would go through a building, then it's a plus one to hit. So you would need a six to hit instead of a five. If you're like this, and the only shortest path goes through the building, you simply can't see that person. There's a couple of like uh, more advanced rules where if you have a support unit that can see a guy behind the building and you're firing like a ballistic missile, there's a little symbol for the three different types of weapons, then you can actually act as if you did have line of sight. It represents firing a missile over. 
And then there's also what's called an alley shot, where you can shoot between two buildings, and you would you would have line of sight. Uh, you're at a plus two to hit, but they don't have line of sight back. And that's one way to earn an experience. So that's a game round right there. You deploy, you move, you shoot, you tag, figure out who the glory hound is, get your uh, sponsors for different buildings tagged, and then go on to the next round. You draw back up to six of your faction cards here. Um, so experience, let's talk about that. This is the experience board right here. The pilots are all little uh, cardboard chits. And if you do any of these things at the bottom, like become the glory hound, will let you move your token up. Uh, make a successful alley shot or a flank shot. That's where you hit someone in their uh, rear facing. That lets you move up. If you demolish a building, you can move up. And if you have all three of your support units still in play at the end of the combat phase, that would move you up again. Now these uh, numbers here, one, two, and three, that's kind of how you level up. So at the start of the game, you need sixes to hit a support unit, you need sevens to save with a support unit, and you need fives to save with a heavy hitter. Uh, to hit a heavy hitter, sorry. When you level up your, when you hit cross the number one, all of a sudden you need sixes now to hit supports instead of sevens. Once you get to level two, you need fives to hit supports instead of sixes. And when you get to the third level, you now save on four pluses. Uh, sorry, you now hit heavy hitters with a four plus. And that's that. That's the game. So what do I think? Well, I like the game. It's a lot of fun, especially at four players. Now, these are some of my favorite kinds of games, these um, skirmish games where you got to use tactical positioning and other strategic elements to outwit your opponent and come out on top. Of course, this thing just pops on the table. This is like just playing with toys. I mean, these things are ridiculous. They come painted, by the way, the retail version. Um, but the support units, they don't. So if you feel like painting them, they're there for you. So yeah, it has just an amazing table presence, like one of the best. Nobody's gonna walk across this table and not ask what this game is. I would consider this almost like a gateway skirmish game. It's got a real easy rule set. It's easy to teach. There's enough meat there to formulate different strategies. Two player, it's not bad. Three player, almost with all these types of games, the one player that doesn't get involved in the fighting is the one that's going to come out on top. I don't, it's just hard to combat that. So, I mean, really the players have to acknowledge the fact that they got to break off and start attacking a player. But soon as two people are fighting in a three player skirmish game, the other guy is going to start taking advantage of not being in a fight. But this game shines at four players. This game is really, really fun at four players. I probably wouldn't play it again two players. I would almost exclusively just play that this at four. But that's just, that's me because I have other skirmish games that I prefer at two. I like the customization before the game. I didn't get into this in the rules overview, but at the beginning you customize your own mech a little bit. They each have their own unique deck of cards with all their different guns. So you are gonna take two secondary weapons and one primary weapon. You get all, I believe, five deploy cards. And then you can take um, seven more, bringing you up to 25. And that can be a um, combination of uh, special movement cards. Like a card might let you do a move outside of the movement phase or let you spin around in a 360 um, or leap over a building or something with jump jets. And then they have these orbital satellites that you can take as well, where you don't even roll the hit, just your laser comes down and boom, hits any target on the map, but then that card goes immediately to your damage pile. So it's a one-time use. However, if you're a repair guy, instead of attacking, he can do a repair action and you roll a dice and see how successful you are. If you roll a six, you could go through your damage pile and choose 
any card to go back into your discard pile. When your draw pile runs out, it all gets shuffled back together, so it ends up in there. So you can recycle these one-time use orbital weapons as well. So the customization, it is cool. There's enough variety in the weapons to make the, the meta for the game fun. So the positioning of your support units really adds almost all of the strategy to this. If it was just your mechs walking around, it would be pretty black and white, pretty obvious what there is to do. So having your supports and using them wisely is a big aspect of this game. I like that you can overuse your energy. Like, you might take three damage yourself, but if you could run an extra three spaces and hit somebody in the flank and maybe do even more damage than you're taking, I like that you can spring those surprises on other players like that. They might not see it coming. They might not consider how much damage you're willing to take yourself to invoke one of your strategies. So that's another thing I like. I love the uh, cards are damaged. When your 25 card deck runs out, you blow up. And that also ends the game if it's more than two players. So there's no player elimination. That's also a good thing. And it also makes you consider, oh, do I blow this guy up? Because if I do, Bob's got way more health than me. He might just get the win. So I better start protecting Dave until Bob's a little bit more beat up. So that was a smart decision. I like that. Like I said earlier, the game is very accessible. It's easy to teach. It's not with uh, the rules, really the alley shot and the way your support units can give you line of sight around the building are the only two complicated rules. And once you introduce those after a round or two of play, they're not that complicated after all. And the main thing about this game is it's a lot of fun. It really is a blast. It's almost a beer and pretzels plus style game. Um, but sitting around the table playing this with four people has been a great time. What do I not like about the game? Well, no game is perfect, right? So probably the the biggest thing is the price tag. I don't, I don't this is probably going to be an expensive game retail like I don't know 140 bucks or something like that. All the guys are pre-painted. Uh, well, these are nice because they're just cardboard buildings. I think you can maybe get plastic or that was Kickstarter exclusive. Um, I don't know, but they're not painted and I just ended up using the cardboard buildings anyway. I touched on it earlier. This game, for me, it's a four player game. I don't mind it at two and three. I'd rather play something else. Although I, I would still happily play at three, but it's, meh for me at two and three player count. I mentioned this as a uh, a thing that's good, the accessibility. Uh, just rolling two dice to hit, taking every hit you have and rolling to save. Personally, when there's a new like uh, skirmish game on the market that gets my attention and might be good, I like to see something uh, more in ingenuitive with the system, something that hasn't been done before, something clever, something smart. I really like the combat in Mythic Battles Pantheon. The The combat ended up being fun and exciting, and I understand why they did that, just to make it simple and not convoluted, so I appreciate the fact they did that, but just personally, I would have liked to see a little bit more of a, I don't know, just a little more to the combat, maybe specific parts of your mech getting damaged or something like that. And I know it's taking it from gateway and turning it into something else. Um, I'm just trying to nitpick and, and bring to light what you might not like about it. The fact that I wish the combat was more unique and more ingenuitive might be the opposite for someone else. You guys might appreciate the fact that it's super easy. You need a five to hit, you roll your two dice, you got a five, there's a hit, you took four damage, I'll roll four dice and every target save I got, I'm saving. So that's kind of a pro Anacon. I like the fact that it's gateway and I wish it was a little more unique or something more to it. I don't even know what, what I wish it was. Um, again, I'm nitpicking. I love the game. It's a blast very fun which is the most important thing overall 
looks beautiful. That's about all I have to say on it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time, guys. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.